Welcome back to the Shift Talks podcast. I'm Natalia Daly, your co-host. And today we're going to be talking about life after uni. Internships, work experience, CVs and more. So be sure to stay tuned. How are you Natalia? I'm good, how are you? How's work going? It's good, it's been really busy but getting excited for Christmas holidays now. Do you want to explain what your job is a little bit? Yeah, so I work in marketing for a venture capital firm. Uh, I've just been working there since this summer um, when I graduated from UCL. I studied English Lit and I'm also now studying at Imperial. And how's uni going? Um, it's going well. It's definitely keeping me busy at the moment. Third year. Yeah, I'm tough. Anyway, should we read this week's problem? Absolutely. Nowadays, having a degree isn't good enough if you want to get a good job. Having work experience, a good portfolio and skills is what recruiters are looking for. Coming from a creative degree narrows down the amount of jobs available. The graduate job market is looking for graduates who have skills in digital, tech and IT. Therefore, if you come from a degree in the arts, there is a massive competitive field you have to beat. And this is all according to Graduate Coach 2020. I think this is definitely a big growing problem, particularly for students who are about to graduate or have just graduated, particularly with inflation and all the problems in the current economic situation. It's definitely something that's pretty worrying. Because of this issue, we decided to ask some students in London to send in some questions through social media about this problem, their main concerns or growing worries on the subject matter. Our first question is, I'm graduating from my degree next year and I can't seem to find any internships. What is the best way to approach employers? Sophia, do you want to tackle this? So I would say that in general, when you're when you're told no in life, when you're told this isn't good enough and you know it's a no, your instinct is often, oh, well, then I need to stop. I'm obviously not good enough. And nowadays, you have to ignore it and just keep applying. Because unfortunately, there are CVs everywhere, and employers receive hundreds and thousands of CVs, and they're bound to say no. So to be honest, getting an internship is really a numbers game. You have to just keep applying, regardless of how many no's you receive. And that can be quite difficult, because often you'll take it as almost a personal failure to receive a no. Um, But really what you should be doing is expecting them. And the more no's you get, the closer you are to getting that one yes. So I would say the way you need to approach employers is with an attitude that is not going to be knocked back down. And yeah, you know, reform your CV, read other people's CVs, do everything you can to improve yourself. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a numbers game. So what's the platform you have used when applying for jobs? Because I've used the Dots and Fashion Monitor as those are some of the better platforms for fashion jobs and also great for collaborations or attending events. But what other platforms have you used? Yeah, so for me, it's mainly been LinkedIn. Um, I think that LinkedIn is a great platform to find jobs. There's a lot of employers on LinkedIn. Um, but it does depend on the kind of job you're looking for. For marketing, which is the sector that I work in, there are lots of great opportunities. Unfortunately, a lot of them are internships, many of which are unpaid. But sometimes that's just what you have to do first in order to then, you know, attain the job that, that you're actually going to want to have long term. But yeah. I think now also a lot of companies and brands are on social media. Social media is always a good way to network and maybe giving it a go and reaching out to some employees might be worth a shot. Or you may even be able to find their email on their socials and send them in your CV. Like sometimes pitching ideas to employers might have them interested. I mean, it's like you said, a game of numbers. You have to be proactive and consistent, really. And sometimes you might end up at a job you didn't expect to want, but it might open many doors for you. Yeah, I think just doing absolutely everything you can and exhausting all of the platforms that are available to you is important. Yeah, definitely. Should we head to the next question? Yeah, so the next question was, how can I perfect my CV? Well, to start off... 
I think putting your biggest accomplishments or skills at the top is very important. I remember my dad once told me at his job they would know when they wanted to hire someone by only the first few lines. So maybe put any languages you speak, relevant work experience, your education or big projects you've worked on higher up. On mine, I think I have my degree in being able to speak Spanish fluently pretty high up. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I'd say with a CV as well, there's a lot of little things that you should try and do. Like, for example, employers don't like having several pages to scroll through. So I used to think the longer my CV was, the better, because, you know, you could sort of give tons and tons of information. But actually, it's quite important because they receive so many CVs, they don't want to be scrolling. So, you know, make sure you include everything, but make sure that it's written in a way that's concise and that it's straight to the point so that it's all on one page. The, the employer can see everything without having to work. And also that way, you know, you don't risk them just not bothering to, to slide to the next page and miss some important information. I think cover letters are also like a big thing. Yeah, like okay. not making sure you don't have one general one that it's obvious you've just emailed it to like 500 people, maybe personalizing them to the business you're or company you're applying to would definitely help yeah no personalizing cvs and cover letters is definitely important even your cv you can personalize you know if you go to your past experiences and edit them a little bit to whatever job it is you're applying for so let's say that you're applying for marketing and you were in a society at uni mention in that mention in the section for that society that you were exposed to you know the society's marketing campaigns or something small like that you can very easily sort of prove that you have the skills even if you really haven't done anything specific I'm sure that it can be worded in a way where you know you have seen and learned about them so yeah yeah I think also taking a portfolio or emailing a portfolio also like for any published work you have um, or work from previous employers definitely shows like your skills and that you actually are interested in the job yeah but yeah, should we move on to the third question? Yeah, what's our third question? So the third question is, what should I prepare myself? How should I prepare myself for job interviews? Right. Well, I'd say that the best preparation is just practice. So you know, it can be as simple as just looking up job interview questions online and, and getting your mum to ask you the questions and trying to write out answers. To be honest, I'd say the best way to prepare for a job interview is simply by preparing. Because a lot of people will think, oh, you know, like I know what the company does, I'm confident of my skills, I don't really need to do a lot. But just by the act of preparing, you'll go to the job interview knowing that you have prepared and that will immediately take away any sort of guilty conscience you might have about not having prepared. And it will make you stronger, even if you don't end up using any of what you wrote, which you probably will. So I definitely say that preparing is important just for your own self-confidence as well and then knowing that you are ready for the job interview I think also maybe like researching the company like looking at past like projects or launches or like anything they've done and maybe bringing that up in an interview they they'll like know that you've done your research and that you actually are like interested in the job and it's not just like for your CV yeah that's very true And, and having a look at all of their social media platforms is important as well um, and trying to figure out how the company makes them their money and what their business model is is very important. Um, and you know, even if you if you have the time, find out a bit about their com- competitors and and sort of what the the market is like in in their industry. Yeah. Do you have any like job interview experiences you want to share? Do I? Um, I've had a lot of job interviews. I'd say that most of them ask you always for your strengths and your weaknesses. And it's important to come up with a good sort of weakness story of something that you've overcome and why it was a weakness that you've learned from. Because I think it's important to show a sort of aspect of having learned from something. Um, Because, you know, job employers, they want a great candidate, but they also want someone that's human, someone that learns from their mistakes. So I think that it's quite common to be asked, you know, what's your biggest weakness or, you know, give me a time when you failed, how do you deal with it? Because people want to see how you deal with problems. Problems are always going to come up at every job. So I'd say I've definitely noticed in my job interviews that question repeated in different ways, in different words, but have a have an answer ready for how you've overcome something and, and how it made you stronger. 
Yeah, I found that also like asking a lot of questions to the the employer like is much more like interactive and and yeah, yeah, definitely. I think they quite like that. They always like seem quite you impressed when you when you ask questions. Yeah. So maybe keeping that in mind. Okay, so that is the end of our three questions. So do you have like any internship experiences maybe like that weren't so great that you'd like to share? So I did an unpaid internship when I was at university and, you know, I was scared to graduate without any experience. So many jobs now ask for experience as soon as you graduate. So I did one in London and I really did enjoy the work, but it was a lot of work. And the fact that I wasn't getting paid, it did feel unfair. And I spent sort of the whole three months that I was working trying to just get over the fact that I wasn't being paid. But it, it really was unfair. And, you know, in the end, I did finish it with a really good letter of recommendation and I was really glad that I got that because that's what then led to me getting a paid internship which turned into the job I have today (laughs) however I wouldn't say that I think it's fair as you know lots of people we need I mean everyone needs to work and earn money no one should be working for free so (laughs) yeah even though personally I did gain from it and it was beneficial to me in the long run I wouldn't say it's something that I support what about you? Yeah, I mean, my unpaid internship, it wasn't heavy workload. It was more like shadowing my boss. So I think on that part, it was fine. But what was annoying is that there was like a terrible time difference. And she would literally just message me at 3 a.m. to like help her out with her tasks, which I thought was a bit taking the piss yeah, me since I wasn't even being paid. But yeah, I still got good experience and it was a five month internship on my CV. So, you know, it's it's going to help me out in the future. Yeah, absolutely. So we've come to the end of our Shift Talks podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And see you next time. Be sure to check out all our social media platforms and the rest of our YouTube channel. Goodbye.